Hello everybody. I wanted to teach everybody how to create the most efficiency out of your spin attack with your weapon or a spin attack like a, a spinning back fist in martial arts. Okay, what you have to do when you start your spin and you have a weapon, your sword or your ball and chain or your pick your poison, your battle axe, you want to keep it as close to your body as possible when you start your spin. And you, the whole way you get to 180 degrees of your spin. And it's, it's, it's based off the same science when a figure skater is spinning with enough momentum. And she has her hands and feet to the outside of the circle. She's spinning slower. But when she brings, a figure skater brings her hands and feet to the inside circle, they spin much faster. Okay. Now, it, it works, it kind of works the same way here. A little bit different, but that's more like angular uh, vorticities and everything with the momentum and the inertia. But what we want to do is create the most efficiency in an attack. Okay, so you hold your weapon, you start, and you want to spin and hard as fast as you can to create as much acceleration as you can. That's why you hold your weapon as close as you can to your body because you want to have to put as much energy in that first half of the spin to get this, the acceleration rate that you want to hit 180 degrees here so when when you hold you when you release your weapon you want to get your end of your weapon at 180 degrees right at the outside center point of your spin okay and this is gonna this helps activate the magic puts the fire on your your weapon okay because you you, you didn't you didn't really increase efficient. You increased efficiency, but you didn't add any more energy. So you unlocked you unlocked energy here in your first 180 degrees of your spin. So we we want to look. So I, I created a simple graph here, and of course that this goes up. Your efficiency goes up with your damage. Okay, so your damage would be at the top. And your efficiency would be the gradual rise on that graph. A simple graph here from 170 to 180 degrees. What we want, what we want to find out, is how big is the head on this nail? What kind of timing do we have to have? What kind of timing do we have to get our weapon from this inside circle to the outside circle at 180 degrees? So, what we want to calculate not only the efficiency here, but we want to calculate the coefficiency, the up and down bell curve. Okay, and right at the center is your mean, right at the middle at 180 degrees. So it, the timing sounds hard, but okay. But I'm, if you get the timing even more perfect than this, at the at the very center point of 180 degrees, let's zoom in on 180 degrees here. What's that? We see an abnormality there in the, in the uh, coefficient here of the spin, because what you're doing is actually like kind of dumping the clutch in your car. You want to dump the clutch right at 180 degrees in the middle of your spin. So you want to get that weapon from the inside circle. So if you had a ball and chain, you want that chain to snap right here in the middle as hard as it can. And you want that ball right there at the center point. And you want that ball, the very middle center point of that middle of that ball to line up with the very center point of 180 degrees to create this spike in efficiency. That's the magic here. And that spike in efficiency is, you get that from uh, activating the, uh, the adding and multiplying recursively with the golden ratio is a phi. That's the magic behind, you know, psychic experiences and everything is the spike in efficiencies with magic. Okay, you could be at hundreds of more percent, it could be a thousand more percent. I'm not sure. But... But right here, I even drew the coefficient of where you release your weapon and how the efficiency drops if you release it too early and you release it too late. Okay, you, you want to release it exactly on that, that magic right there at the top of that center point. So when you're bringing around, you're still cranking. You want to crank with everything you got the whole way around the circle. But you, when you release your weapon, see, you don't have to crank at the beginning. You don't have to crank with all this outside rotational mass. So you don't have to put as much energy here as your first half of your spin. But when you release your weapon right there at the center point, 
you're still cranking the rest of the way through that circle. Bang, until it hits here and it's explosive. It's the wrecking ball in physics. Okay, I'm only explaining to you the first spin, second spin, third spin, and it could go on and on and on. But I put a star beside each center point of the circle. Okay, but the second and third spin is not going to be any more powerful if you can't get a faster rate of spin at the center circle before you hit 540 degrees or if you go past 540 and hit 900 degrees and release your weapon at 540 or 900. And I would go on and on and on and before it would go on forever if you want to do all the math down to the thousands of spin. But so... If you have one shot to give it all, you want to release your weapon here. But if you think you can get a faster faster spin on that inside circle on that second spin, do it. Because you're going to increase, if you release there at the top of that center point, you're going to increase, you're going to have way more efficiency coming around that rest, rest of the way half around, around the circle, which means way more damage at your finish point. Okay, third spin, I... If you could get faster after a 540 or a 720 into a 900, you could probably chop down a telephone pole with a butter knife. Okay. <laughs> but let's be realistic here. But this is exactly how I think all the magic works behind The Legend of Zelda's uh, hero, Link. He knew the basic spin attack with a sword. But then he learned, going on throughout the game, he learned the secret of the magic of the whirlwind attack. Uh, the big move and the spin attack. Okay, that's going to knock down guys like a bowling pin. Uh, which is, it's all pretty cool to think about. And this is, these are my theories and everything. And, uh, well, this is, it's actually true. You first have your spin. You want to keep that weapon very inside the center of your body. Increase the most efficiency when you drop it. Or you, if you drop your sword, what you want to do almost to hold your sword to the flat edge of your nose and drop it straight down when you hit 180 degrees as fast as you can and, and keep cranking until you hit your target. So, no, uh, <laughs> Dan Winter didn't teach me any of this. Uh, we didn't learn this magic from John D. I didn't learn this from an extraterrestrial. I, this is all my own thought and theory and with science and everything. I've been studying science for a long time. All right, thank you. Bye.